So next we're going to look at what is arguably the most important application of the dot product, which is the construction of orthogonal projection. So the, the scenario that we're typically looking at is something like this. Um, and in fact, just to kind of keep things simple, I may even choose to not draw a coordinate system. What I'm gonna do is draw a vector, let's say um, u, like so. And we'll draw a vector v, and let's draw v like so. Now the, the relative lengths of these two vectors aren't important. Uh, v might be shorter or longer than u. Uh, the angle here, I've drawn it as an acute angle. It doesn't have to be, it could be obtuse. Um, if it's a right angle, not, you know, it's gonna not be very interesting, but uh, we can start with this, okay. So what we want to do is we want to actually construct a pair of vectors. And the idea is that um, we take u, and now u is, the length of u doesn't matter. We're only really interested in the direction of u and this line that we get in the direction of u, okay? And what we do is from the tip of the vector v, we're gonna drop down a perpendicular, like so. So we want that to be a right angle. Okay. Now, there are two vectors that result from doing this. Um, there's one, which is in the direction of u, like so. And this vector here, We'll call that, uh, let's say, u parallel. This is parallel to u. Now this has a name. This is called the projection of v onto u, okay? And we're gonna be interested in deriving a formula for that. Uh, the other vector we have is this one here, and we'll call that u perpendicular, because it's perpendicular to you. Um, and, well, there's no special name for this, but do notice that since, since the parallel and perpendicular parts add up to give me v, uh, one way to kind of get this is to take v and subtract off this projection, okay? That gives me the, the vector that I'm looking for. All right, now, as I've drawn it, this vector here is supposed to be orthogonal to u, right? Um, we're supposed to have this right angle. Uh, this vector is supposed to be parallel to u, right? And so we want, we want to sort of work things out to make sure that this actually happens. Okay, so let's think about it. We can add in an angle here, theta, and we can say, okay, so this u perpendicular, what can I say about it? Well, one thing I know for sure is that it's a scalar multiple of u, right? We're interested in figuring out what that scalar is going to be, okay? Um, we also want this u perpendicular, right? So it's equal to v minus u parallel. And we want it to be orthogonal to you, right? So we want the dot product of the perpendicular part with you, that should be zero. Okay, but let's substitute some things in here. Um, and maybe we'll do it in the other, you know, we know the order doesn't matter for the dot product. Um, so you, dotted with, well, v minus, um, now this parallel part, we said, oh, we want that to be a scalar multiple of u, cu, okay? We want that to be zero. Well, we know that we can distribute the dot product. So u dotted with v minus u 
dotted with C times U. That should be zero. All right. Ah, but also remember that we can pull scalars out. That's another property of the dot product, right? Um, so we get that U dot V minus C times U dot U. That should be equal to zero. Ah, so that actually gives me, gives me the value of C. So C has to be u dot v, right? Move that to the other side of the equation. And we're going to divide by u dot u. Good. All right. Now, um, notice that uh, if you want u dot u, we know from properties of the dot product, that's the same thing as the magnitude of u squared. And another way that you will sometimes see this is, well, remember that we can write the dot product as the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times cos theta, right, divided by magnitude of u squared. And simplify a little bit, like so. Right. So what we get is C is the magnitude of V divided by the magnitude of U times cos theta. That's the value for this C. Great, we did it. Um, we've got our result. Now, um, that lets me get this projection, right? Ultimately, we're interested in that projection formula. Um, I'm going to go back to actually here. This is usually the, the version that you're going to see. Um, some people often forget that you have to square the magnitude, though. So you know, if you're one of those people who forgets to square the magnitude, you may prefer to use the original form up here. Um, what we get as a conclusion is that the projection of v onto u is, well, um, it's c times u. So we just have to substitute in this value for c. u dot v over the magnitude of u squared times u. Great. Right. That's the projection formula. Great. Right. Um, I think we can probably leave it at that. I will I'll add one sort of short remark, uh, that if you, if you were to use this version instead, um, then what you would get is you would get um, we can write it like this. I'm going to write it as the magnitude of v times cos theta. And that 1 over magnitude of u, I'm going to put it over here. All right? Uh, and the reason I'm going to put it over there is just to emphasize that this bit is actually a unit vector. All right? So that's a unit vector. Um, and then this quantity here, right? That's, that's sort of the, the scale factor, right? So um, if you start with the unit vector in the direction of u, uh, this amount, sort of magnitude of v times cos theta, right, tells you how much you have to stretch that unit vector to get the projection, this projection which gives you sort of the, the vector in the direction of u so that this, um, when you drop this perpendicular down, right, the perpendicular meets at the tip of that vector. Right. And that kind of makes sense, right? It makes sense that the, you know, the location of this particular point here, it's going to depend on the angle and the magnitude of that vector. So this, this works out, right? Um, note that in particular, it does not depend on the magnitude of u, right? If I rescale u, scale factor is going to cancel out, okay? 
Um, maybe one last thing to note is we can check um, is the perpendicular part orthogonal to u? Well, it's, it's supposed to be. Um, and I mean, maybe I'll leave that as, as an exercise for you to try, but it, honestly, it's really a matter of kind of working through this result here, now knowing what c should be, and you know, plugging it in and confirming that yes, indeed, it does simplify to zero at the end.